Welcome to the Service MVP Podcast. My name is Joe Crisera, America's Service Sales Coach, and we have an exciting guest with me. His name is Ryan Lee from Landscape Lighting Secrets. Ryan, welcome to the program. How are you doing today? Thanks, man. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. Well, it wasn't uh, it wasn't about a year ago, I think it was, when we first learned that you were kind of like a brother from another mother and that you that we have a lot of beliefs that are similar, right? I know. And I, I love that your like nickname is Uncle Joe because I'm like, you really are my Uncle Joe. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I love you know, I'm, I love America's you America's service uncle, I guess it would be. Uh Ryan, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do. And uh yeah, Ryan has a specific niche that he is involved with and he's trying to make America's uh front and backyards and sides of the house beautiful in the evening uh with lighting solutions that make people live their life in a, a much more high quality way. Ryan, why don't you tell us about how you got involved with this kind of a situation here. Take a few minutes and give us a little background on you. Yeah, I love it. So uh, I actually got my start in entrepreneurship, probably like everyone else. I was just shoveling walks and, uh, you know, shovel driveways, things like that. But that wasn't true entrepreneurship. And so when I started my first business, we got into landscape lighting. And people, so a lot of people are like, what's landscape lighting? And that was my question. I was like, I don't even know what this is, but it's, you know, we beautify people's properties, not only their homes, but their landscapings, their, their outdoor living areas. We, um, really, uh, magnify what they've already got and, and help bring light to their life. Right. And so I had a landscape lighting business in Dallas, Texas from 2007 to 2019. And um, through that time, it was tough, man. I thought it was going to be so easy. I've got a marketing degree. I got an MBA. I mean, I'm like the total package. And then you start your business and you're like, crap, I don't know anything. And so uh, had the opportunity to fall on my face a lot, learned a lot throughout that process. But I was fortunate enough to exit that business in 2019. And uh, since then, um, the last four or five years now, I've been coaching others on how to bolt on landscape lighting to their existing business. And uh, mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. been awesome. It's been really cool. Well, let's talk about this. Ryan's got three tips uh, to uh, any kind of service business, although it definitely applies to the landscape uh, lighting business. But I, I think when you're in that business, it's just like another service, like anything else that's out there, whether you're shoveling snow or whether you're doing Christmas lights or just outdoor landscape lights, or even if you're doing heating and cooling or plumbing, the value is value, no matter what trade you're in. Ryan, uh, let's go ahead and give us three uh, secrets that you have to your success uh, when you're creating revenue and profit and uh, making sure that you're successful. Uh, you want to go ahead and give us uh, your first tip? What's the number one thing that you think is important uh, for people to know, salespeople and service people to know out there? Yeah, well, first off, let me say this. like when I, when I When I launched this coaching business, Landscape Lighting Secrets, I didn't know I could become a coach. Like, I was like, who am I? <laughs> what do I know? You know, I was just one guy on one path. There's people that are smarter than me, more successful than me, richer than me, all this stuff. And so one of the things I did was I hired a coach and I was like, teach me how to do this. And one of the exercises they went, they had me go through, cause I was like, what am I going to teach people? Like, I don't know how to do this. And uh, it was so powerful. They basically sent me through some exercises to help me extrapolate what it was, what were the things that held me back? What were the things that helped me in business? And now I was able to put together a really cool formula that makes it simple for people to uh, really increase and more than double their profits. So the thing that most businesses don't have enough of is profits. And that's yep. why the majority of businesses fail, right? For one of the reasons. And so but, I found a way for people to double their profits through my, my proven formula. And the first thing is really just increasing your price. Uh, that's kind of my first secret. And it's like, well, that's not a secret, just raise your price. But we give people, and I'm happy to talk about them today, some of the, the tools and things that you can use to be able to actually increase your price. Yeah, I think a lot of times people, uh, they price them out, price themselves out. They try to be a little less money than their current competitors, as opposed to saying, you know, I need to charge enough money to not just for this job, but also to be in business for the future and take care of all the expense that takes place for marketing and advertising and all this stuff. It's all, all got to be built into the price, right? And yeah. I think the price the price being higher does challenge mm-hmm. you to be better to create value too. I think it does kind of puts into action plan like, wow, with prices this high, I got to learn how to explain it better. Uh, go ahead and tell us a little bit about the pricing and the exercise you take somebody through to increase that price. It's not just randomly, right? Do you have right. a yeah. methodology for that? Tell us about that. For sure. I mean, I, I think it's really hard to raise your price if you if you don't increase value, right? And so, and and by the way, I used to be the guy. 
Like when we started, it was my brother and I, and I was like, wait, those people charge that? Like, we don't need to charge that much. We don't have the overhead that they have. We we barely have car insurance, you know? And so we right, put together right. numbers and you're like, cool. Like that, I look back, it's so funny because I'm like, that was my pitch. Like that, that was my mm-hmm. that was my approach. And what's sad is it actually worked to an extent, right? But what I found out, and you met you hit you hit hit on it, is like I never could afford to grow. I ne- I, I always wanted to be this future self of this. There was a future version of myself in our company, but all of a sudden I, I found that I couldn't afford to hire another salesperson. I couldn't afford to fire or hire another technician, someone else in the office. And it's like, well, duh. Your, your value proposition is we're lower on price than anyone else and we don't have their overhead. Well, if mm-hmm. you want to, if you want to succeed in life, in business, you have to start acting like who you want to be. And when I learned that it, it switched, it changed everything. I started pricing like who I wanted to be. And suddenly I could afford an office manager. I could afford having more salespeople and, and an actual team. And what was cool about that is as we did that, a team is much more valuable than an individual. As good as I am at sales or designing or installing lights or whatever the thing is, like I'm not, I can't be everywhere at once. Right. And so mm-hmm. as we grew, we became more valuable to the marketplace. And in return, you can keep charging more money for that. That's awesome. Uh, what's the second uh, tip you've got for us after raising? So once we raise the price, now we know, okay, now we've got much more robust pricing that is going to be able to help us grow in the future. What's the second tip you got, Ryan? Well, if it's okay, let me let me hit on the first thing real quick because oh, sure, good, yeah, um, yeah. I, I talked about increasing value. There's there's two ways to increase value. One, you can lower the price. Okay, don't do it. I tried it. It works temporarily. <laughs> it might get you out of a bind or help you like pay your next you know payroll or mortgage or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Really good long term. So the other the other way to do it is increase your offer. Right. And a lot of people are so afraid of this because their competition's not doing it. And oh, I can't price that. I know what our competition is charging. And my question is, well, are you, do you really trust your competition that much? Like, what do they know that you don't know? Like, are they more qualified? Are they a pricing expert? Because what in reality, what's happening is you're pricing your product and your service off of your competition's pricing. And you know how they came up with their price? They, they got the quote from you. Right. And so, right. <laughs> it's kind it's of a vicious like, circle, vicious circle, vicious, vicious. Right. And it's like when they think you know what you're doing and you think they know what they're doing, in reality, no one knows what they're doing. So you've mm. got to be the market leader and you got to increase value. And there's lots of different ways to do this. One of the things I like to do is call an offer stack. And so instead of just saying like, oh, okay, here's your landscape lighting, Joe, it's ten thousand mm-hmm. um, dollars. That that works, by the way. I've actually done that. And the problem with success is that it prevents us from excelling and becoming better because we think we know what we're doing, right? So because yeah. that worked for a while, I didn't try to innovate. But then after a while, I started to think, I wonder if I could get better. And an offer stack is something like this. Instead of telling you, Joe, your lighting's $10,000, I'd be like, Joe, no, the normal pricing for this uh, landscape lighting system is around fourteen grand, right? For you today only, we're going to do it for ten grand. And in it, in addition to just doing your lighting, we're also going to give you a year's worth of annual maintenance, which is a seven hundred and fifty dollar value. We're going to give you a twenty year warranty on the lights, which is a fifteen hundred dollar value. You get that absolutely free. We're going to give you a lifetime warranty on the transformer, which is five hundred dollar value, absolutely free. And we've partnered with other local service providers, so we have a. Uh, I know you have a pool. We have a pool company that will give you a free three months worth of maintenance, which is a $300 value, a free irrigation checkup, $300 value. And you're basically showing them this huge offer stack that's worth $25,000. When they move forward today, they're getting it for just $10,000. Nice. nice. That makes sense. So I'll make sure that the value exceeds the price as a second tip. Remember, one, raise the price, but then add enough stuff to the value stack uh, to do that. I know we do that with like warranty services and just other, and I like what you're doing with complimentary services with partners that would be happy to do a free full maintenance just to give people a try, have a trial in a way of it. Uh, and maybe the irrigation <laughs> guy who does all that stuff. And uh, what's cool things, about- things that are needed, things that are needed for the yard. You're going to be, you're going to be out there uh, in the yard doing landscape lighting and watch, look at the irrigation, and everything else that's going on. Right? 100%. They're, that's something they're going to use anyway, and it doesn't cost you anything. You know, if it costs you money, then it's like, well, that's kind of like lowering your price. So um, the other nice thing about that is when you reach out to people, 
And let's say in the landscape lighting world, you really want to partner with pool builders, landscape architects, home builders, realtors, everybody who's dealing with high-end people. If you could list them in every single proposal that you do, that's offering value to their business and they're going to want to return that favor. And so you get them to also include um, an offering of yours in all of their offers as well. And it's a great way to just really get momentum in your business. Nice. nice. I guess if you were in the carpet cleaning business, you could add scotch guard protection or you know uh extra you could do you could do other things i mean so many additional things you could do yeah that uh in every every business whether it's a maid service whether it's a landscape lighting service or a heating and air conditioning if you're going to sell the air quality hey how about the bulbs and the pads and the filter to go with it we'll in- include that as well uh, with you you can s- ship that with you as well so right. the, and, so, and so think about thing. things that are things that are complementary it sounds like you're really yeah. explaining there and the thing that people that I didn't realize that I still think of people, a lot of people struggle with is people want value. You know, our clients, our homeowners, they want value. They just because they're asking for a lower price doesn't mean that they're cheap. It doesn't mean that they need a lower price. They just, you just haven't done a good enough job communicating value. And personally, I think you're doing a disservice by not charging a premium price because then you're going to be tempted to be like, oh, man, this, this customer's calling me again. Or when you do close the deal at a cheaper price, Maybe I'll use cheaper wire. Maybe I'll use cheaper fixtures. Maybe I'll use cheaper connections. I need to make my money. After all, I'm a business owner. I've sacrificed. I got to feed my family. And so then we actually do a disservice to the community by installing inferior product or or not giving that red carpet white glove experience. So for me, it's easy to come in and raise a price and charge whatever I need to charge to not only hire better talent, but provide better products and service and then over deliver with that red carpet white glove experience. I think people get a sense. I think the service provider uh, has a sense of quality themselves, and they feel they they believe in them more, right? If you find a more premium solution, like more premium lighting systems or transformers and things like that are more heavy duty, then you, the service provider, start to believe in it. And when you believe in something, uh, what impact does that have, Ryan, when the service provider themselves actually believes that the solution is worth the price? Well, honestly, that actually ties us in perfectly to the second tip, because belief, man, If you don't have belief, you're probably not going to last very long in this game, right? But once you have belief, as you know, Joe, like it, that's everything, man. What if you, if you don't believe in yourself, how do you expect others to? But once you do and you have that confidence, they, there is no over, there's no overcoming objections. Like people buy from people that they like and trust. And so if you like and trust yourself, they automatically are going to be drawn to that. And it's, it's hard to come up with objections when you believe in yourself that much. So. The second tip that I have is after you've increased your price, and by the way, these are all levers that are really easy to pull. Like so many people are like, well, how do I get more leads? Or how do I do this? Or how do I do that? It's like, just do this. If you go in this order and raise your price, then you can afford to recruit better talent, right? You can afford to work on your business. You can do these other things, but raise your price. The second one is close deals on the spot. Okay, and a lot of people struggle with this, especially in my world, because the average ticket for landscape lighting is around eight to ten thousand dollars. Some of these deals are over six figures, and they really struggle. They're like, "Well, I don't know. What if I'm wrong here? I got to go back and I and and I and, and can I give someone a price that quick? Because when I learn sales, you got to build value and all this stuff, and so they're really afraid to do it. But what do you think, Joe? It, it is the number one thing people want to know when they call someone for a quote. Like, it doesn't matter what home service we're talking about. What's the number one thing people want to know when they call someone for a quote? What's what's the price? That's exactly what's what they're the looking price? for. It's crazy, yeah, right? It's, it, it, and I've seen a lot of people in that space, uh, really every space, who are reluctant to give the price because they're, they're afraid they're going to get blowback and they're afraid they're going to get, uh, if they give them the actual price, especially if it's higher, they don't really believe in the price themselves. So they kind yeah. of, they, they, they even default to email. I guarantee if I called a landscape lighting specialist that wasn't trained by Ryan Lee, that most likely I would be getting an email with the price and I wouldn't get an explanation of it at all. And I'd be getting it a different day. I wouldn't get it the same day at all. Uh, and th- I would say this, uh, th- a certain level of competency that shows people that you've already done this job and that you're a master of this trade if you can get the price to them right now. Does that make sense, Ryan? The oh. competence level, like the perception of comp- competence because of that? Well, exactly. I mean, you're actually the one person that's giving them what they want because everyone else is afraid to do it. We know they want the price. So why not be different? Why not be the one that's like, hey, in about 45 minutes after we walk your property, I've got a bunch of questions for you. 
would it be okay if I, you know, was actually able to give you the price and get you on the schedule for today? Um, that's what people want. So why not give them what they want and be unique? So um, you got to be able to close deals on the spot. And there's so many things like you mentioned, most people will take notes, take pictures, they'll email a proposal. People buy an emotion. So how much emotion comes in an email? Zero. It's just a number at that point. And, and then, by the way, like, what if there are questions? What if there are concerns, which is normal? If someone's never yep, gone, exactly. they're going to have questions, which a lot of people think those are objections. They're not. They're just questions or concerns. And when yep. you present that price, hey, Joe, it's going to cost you this much, right? It's 10000 but remember, it's $25,000 in value. And you're like, well, I don't know. You know, we got to think about it or we got to get other quotes. It's easy to have a conversation at that point and say, no problem. I totally understand that, right? That's normal. <laughs> You're human. You're married. You have to talk, right? What is it that you guys need to talk about? And what's cool is when you do that, you'll end up closing more sales than ever because you're willing to ask one extra question that nobody else is willing to ask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you could have a conversation about what's in the pr presentation. It's like, of course, we present premium mid-range economy choices to people. So I could say, you know what, Joe, I understand. Let's think about what's Let's just both admit that top option is too much. Let's get rid of that top one. L look at the more economical one, the second one. And they go, no, I like that top one. Really? What do you like about it? You know, let's get this. I like the fact that it's got the whole package with the landscaping and everything, the irrigation and everything like that. Well, it's a good choice. So what should we do? Back to that again. The what should we do moment, right? Uh, but truth, truth, there it is. You got it right there in front of you. Uh, the bottom line what is this, though, guys. The bottom line is that... Um, you know, it's just the conversation you're having. Like a, I say it's a, like a car dealer in Las Vegas. You got to just deal the next card. Uh, that card that you had that maybe didn't work, and now you got to just look for another card and see what works. Just keep trying to keep trying to find the right combination of solutions that works for this client. That rings the bell. You know, and the, the closing the the deal on the spot is so it's so much more effective. Number one, but. The other thing that it does is it, it buys you back time in your life and in your business. Because for landscape lighting, if I go and I meet with you for an hour, maybe I stay an hour and a half, I'm able to collect a deposit check, get you on the schedule. I mean, we're moving forward. So yep. I've helped myself, but I've also helped you because you're a, you're a busy guy. You've probably owned several businesses. You, you've, you've got to do other quotes for your house. I, I just checked off something off your list and now you don't have to go get three other quotes. You don't have to think about anything. I've really done a service for you by helping you make a solid choice. And then from my, you know, selfish standpoint, I also don't have to go back and prepare these lavish emails and proposals. And then, and then you're not going to respond. And then I got to follow up and I got to leave you all these voicemails and texts. And instead of doing that, I'm calling on new referral partners. And I'm getting relationships with the high-end realtors, the interior designers, and I'm building relationships. I'm building my business instead of doing this crappy follow-up stuff that doesn't even work. Yeah, you spend your time getting the job done or spend your time following up. Uh, definitely, I see that difference. But I, I will tell you, Ryan, especially in that kind of a business, the landscape lighting business, I would say that unless they had Ryan Lee uh, training them, <clears throat> some, some kind of way if they've seen your podcast even, like this podcast will be great if they see it. Because I would say there's a 0% chance that somebody would actually make the prices and present them on the same call on the very first call there. Uh, this is why I think you're so needed. I think that's why uh, Ryan Lee is needed in this industry because everybody is so, I mean, seriously, the service provider is reluctant. And I even said, hey, if you just make the prices, I'm ready to move forward. I've told people that. And they go, ah, just not comfortable making the prices right now. I'm like, you're not comfortable making the prices? I mean, uh, what does it say when a service provider tries to talk the customer out of moving forward? Because that's really what happens. Literally what happens is the service provider is uh, reluctant to make the prices. So they're not sure if it's accurate. They're not confident in the prices. So they say, I got to go work on this and let me email it to you. They're, they're uncomfortable with the talking to the customer, uncomfortable with making the prices. Uh, and that's just two gaps that they have right there. If they solve that gap, they would get number two achieved. I think sell on the spot if they did that. What do you think of yeah, that? That's true. I mean, that's, that's, so that's why I start with these, these easy things, because like I, if someone will trust me and that's, they, they need to trust me, if they will do this, I'm, I can't guarantee that their first visit is going to be a one call close, but I can guarantee you they're going to do a lot better than they did without me. Right. And if people will try it a few times and not give up, oh, they love it. They're like, oh my gosh, you just saved me like so much time, so much money and all this stuff. So it's right. definitely the way, you know, that I know that. And we just need to convince people to get out, get outside of their comfort zone. I know it's not easy. I used to not do it too, um, but it gets easier over time. And it's it, you're you're actually giving people what they want. So unless you hate people, 
give them what they want. <laughs> uh, we don't hate people, but you know what? I would say this, the, the ability to create a price that's customized and relevant and accurate for each client on the spot is a demonstration of the competency of your mastery of your trade, whatever it is. Uh, because if you, you are like, here's the problems we got. Uh, well, here's what you're experiencing. You need to get this reason why you need this. Uh, number two, I don't have a solution for you. It kind of shows me that a person is hesitant to manage the solution part of the project. How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to trust this guy that he's going to be able to actually get the work done if he can't even manage the pricing? Does that make sense, sir? Well said. You know, it's funny. I used to tell people, let's say, you know, even though I'm like, close on the spot, close on the spot. I'm not perfect, guys. Sometimes I screw up. I'm like, wait, what am I doing? I'm at my, my house. Why didn't I close that person? And maybe I try, but you can't, you're not going to be 100%. And so I'd have people I'd follow up with. Hey, yeah, we're just, you know, we're just got one more quote coming in. I'm like, okay, let me ask you something. We've, we've been going back and forth for two weeks. I gave you my price in person two weeks ago. How long are you willing to wait on someone who's promised you something who has not delivered and they don't have any of your money yet, by the way. Right, Once right. They do have your money. How long do you think it's going to take for them to answer one of your phone calls? Yeah. <laughs> and then I mean, we we'll almost you're, always go, you're right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying, I'm trying to get, like, you're trying to give them money and they're making you wait two weeks for the price. Uh, what's going to happen when they're not getting money? And they're, yeah, that's a good point there. Uh, let's go to number three. We're kind of running a little short of time here. Let's go to three, which is uh, what's the third item you think would be towards success for any service provider they could do? So st sell it on the spot. Make sure you get the competency to make the prices. Uh, make, raise the price, number one. Number two, make sure you get the comp. Now, what's number three, Ryan? Third and final is high quality leads. Uh, you know, these, these first two can be very easy or very difficult. And uh, it's very easy if you're in front of the right person. And so if you're just trying to run some like cheap Facebook ads or something like that for landscape lighting, at least, you know, other, other, every industry is different. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you expect to be able to go charge a premium price and close the deal on the spot. And they just saw your Facebook ad and they have no idea what landscape lighting is. And they're not even interested. They just saw a cool picture. You're probably not going to be able to get that same effect. And so if, yeah. you, if I can help you get high quality leads from people who already want what you have, these other things become a no brainer. So it's really the, the three that make that magic formula. And so, you're, order, so yeah. you're saying that you're saying the fish in a pond where the fish are bigger, not this, not, not a pond with minnows. That's right. Uh, Trying to get the pond with the bigger fish in the pond, right? Well, yeah. And I'm, I've even fished in streams and lakes that don't have any fish, you know, so mm. that's super frustrating. So definitely find the lakes, find the ponds, find the streams where you're going to pull out the monsters if that's where you're going for, right? And uh, in landscape lighting, we don't have like a cheap, you know, $500 option. So mm -hmm. why, why would we waste any time marketing to or talking to those people? Maybe they go into a, um, a, 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 an email sequence or something like that where we build them up. So when they are ready five years from now or something like that, that's okay. But you, you really don't want to meet with someone in person until they're pre-qualified and you know that you've got a high probability of closing that deal on the spot at a premium price. Uh, any tips on that fishing in that right pond or getting the the right leads because I, I think everybody would say that they agree with this any pro tips you can give us that uh, off the record yeah. that can help us to uh, find the right those right customers what do you think absolutely so uh, and we we take people through all of these things so we we give them all the tools all the downloads all the scripts and everything for all three of these in our coaching program mm -hmm. but the the ideas is what we're talking about so the way to get high quality leads is through referral partners it's all through relationships so um, if even if you go onto Google, let's say you do a Google ad uh, and you target landscape lighting installer near me. Okay, that's a good lead, but you don't know. Is that going to be a $5,000 job, a $100,000 job? You, you don't know any of that, right? Right. right. Someone is building a house and they're paying an integrator, which is a home automation expert. If they're paying $300,000 to put Lutron and smart controls and all this stuff in their house, to me, that's a pretty qualified buyer. Right. Yeah. And it to, it to me, it speaks to someone who who values uh, high quality products and services. Right. And so if yeah. I can get a lead from that person, I'm much more likely to be able to close on the spot at a premium price. So we go after uh, landscape architects, home builders, pool builders, realtors, interior designers, even though we're doing exterior lighting. Those yeah, yeah. Designers, they but the first time I had this experience, I'm sitting there talking to the interior designer and the homeowner. I'm looking at the homeowner, the client asking questions. 
interior designers answering. And I, I pick up pretty quickly, like, hold on, they hold the wallet, they hold the checkbook. And you, right. you don't even talk to the client at that point because they've given them full reign. So it's all about relationships. And those people are amazing because when you go meet with them, they're like, they're not looking to get quotes. You think they want more strangers in their house? No, yeah. they're going to move forward with you because you were referred by that person that's already well respected and trusted. Yeah. So in a way, you got this kind of a a bolt on kind of a service that you're offering that fits well with another different service that's like automation or or that kind of, or exterior or landscaping. I'm sure there's a lot of landscapers who don't want to do light lighting. They just want to do the landscaping, and that's it. Uh, if you find a partner who would like to add that to the portfolio. And maybe you make a reward system for allowing that to happen, right? Is that uh, a, a factor where if something happens good out of it type of a thing? You can give them a reward system for that? Absolutely. So depending on where your business is at, if you're in growth mode or you know if you're new or whatever, when I started my business, we were spending a little over 15% of our revenue on advertising. And so it was a no-brainer for me to say, well, wait a minute, this isn't just a, a, a a, a marketing campaign that might bring me in leads. When you're when you get these types of deals, you're paying that referral commission that I would pay 10% mm -hmm. as a thank you. It wasn't like here's 10%, I hope this works out, which that's kind of what other marketing is. This is a, a thank you. And so we paid 10% of total contract value. And again, if you're if your job is a hundred thousand dollar deal, that that referral partner is getting ten thousand dollars simply for, for providing a text with someone's name exactly. and phone number on there. It's crazy. I mean, it's got, it's got to be a marketing expense. Miles, look at, I mean, I call that guaranteed marketing. Marketing, most yeah. marketing, you throw dollars at the wall and hope it sticks. This yeah. is, you're getting you're getting an actual lead from an actual lead, not from uh, throwing it at the money mailer and hoping somebody calls you, which is the opposite of what you're talking about. You're talking about a concentrated lead that's been booked, in, booked with your company. Uh, why not pay uh, the 10% of the revenue? Because that's guaranteed a uh, lead there, not something that uh, we just throw at the newspaper and see if people call us or whatever kind of a thing. Yeah. That's and, it's brilliant there, Ryan. Uh, man, you've already given here people here enough enough time and information uh, to make to make themselves successful already, and that's that's what you're in. You're in that li landscape lighting uh, secrets. So thanks for your secret. Those are three great. Uh, you probably gave us like five or six secrets. You realize that? <laughs> There's you, some you, your your value stack was pretty high on this podcast, <laughs> right, Ryan? <laughs> You, value, can't, you, you, can't help, you can't help yourself. You're always trying to create value. Ryan, how do people learn about Ryan Lee and landscape lighting secrets? And you never know. You might be an electric, electrical business who wants to do outdoor lighting. You might be a landscaping business. You might be just a home service business that yeah. can see the unique uh, opportunity here. When Ryan's throwing out numbers like eight to 10,000, uh, you know that if you're a service business, that that's profit that you can make there. Ryan, how do people get a hold of you and what do they do to get involved with your service? Sure thing. Thank, and by the way, thanks again for having me on here, Joe. I, I truly look up to you. I got your, I got this gift in the mail, you guys. It was so cool. This was two days ago. I've, I've been, I've been gone every single week and I, and I got home. I think this was here for a couple of weeks, but I opened this on Monday. I have not read it yet, but I was, I was shocked. It felt so good. I was like, holy cow. So I'm looking to, I'm looking forward to reading what should we do? Joe, you came and did a training for us in our coaching program. And I thank you for that. Uh, my my program, if you just go to landscapelightingsecrets.com, there's a lot of helpful information there. We've got some, obviously, value that we give away for free. But if you want to schedule an appointment with me or one of my team members, you can watch a, a free case study. Uh, watch that. If that interests you and you're like, heck, yeah, this would this might be a really cool bolt-on for my business, schedule a call. We go over a strategy session. And that strategy session is designed to help you really get an understanding of where you're at, where you want to be. And it sounds simple. But most people don't know those answers, right? And so we really give a lot of value on that call. But if you're interested, we can tell you about the coaching program. I also have my podcast, which Joe, you've been on, uh, Lighting for Profits. You can go to lightingforprofits.com and uh, it's awesome. I mean, if you're considering like, maybe I, sh maybe I should do this. And even if you're not, I mean, when you were on, we weren't, well, we actually did talk about landscape lighting because you got lighting at your house, but I most love it. Yeah. Guests, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a smart, I'm a consumer of your services for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm always, I'm still, I'm having to redo it. So I might need somebody right now, actually. So right. uh, you never yeah, know. We, we just tore out, we just tore all the old stuff out uh, because it was garbage and we got, we bought a house with it and it was kind of garbage. So we might maybe in the market for somebody, one of your professionals. Let's see how good he does when he comes. I know. To I wonder. I, right. Dude, they're going to be so intimidated to come meet with you. It's going to be awesome. Uh, I should film Probably, it. but I'll help them. You don't realize I'll actually help them provide a good solution. But Ryan, thanks so much for being here and helping all the service providers out there 
no matter what trade, I think that Ryan Lee has something there uh, with his enthusiasm and simplicity of the MIF material. He tries to make the complex into something simple. Ryan, thanks so much for your service and thanks for the mostly thanks for your friendship. I, I knew I didn't I knew I was going to meet a colleague. I didn't know I was going to meet a new friend when I first met you, though. You know? That's awesome, man. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great one. We'll see everybody on the next podcast.